top five indie games of the month? Josh! Yo, Oof! Up. Where the hell are you? Nowhere. First seen in E3, Counter Spy created a buzz with its period style. And now, upon full release, its presentation hasn't dulled a bit and terrifically serves as a celebration of a bygone era. But as much as it looks at the positives of the past, Counter Spy acknowledges the negatives. In game, you play from the perspective of a neutral body, attempting to disable both the US and USSR's nuclear activity. It's a not so subtle reminder of how close we came to nuclear war. And given the situation in Israel, India, Pakistan, North Korea, it's a mildly relevant reminder as well. Where the game falls short is its gameplay. The randomly generated levels act counterintuitively to the stealth mechanics. For example, you may be given a room with little cover and many foes. It's also relatively short and just doesn't grab the player or compel them to continue. This reality is incredibly frustrating given the ingenuity of Counter Spy's ideas and how likeable its appearance is. It still comes in at number 5, and you can play it on the Sony family of consoles. I don't get it. Why would anyone come here by choice? We're talking about a creature that's lived in this swamp for over 60 years. Who said a game had to be long to be good? I don't know, but SFB games certainly weren't listening when they made Detective Grimoire. The game can be completed in one sitting, and with a great story, characters and voice actors, that time flies by. Investigating a murder case in a swamp, the point-and-click gameplay consists of interrogating, adventuring and assembling clues. There are also some rather elementary puzzles, as well as a feature that lets Grimoire assess your deductions. That little girl is too stupid for my beard to be so smart. Detective Grimoire will certainly not disappoint you, and there's not much to critique given the game's aims. Hopefully there are more installments to come, and for the time being you can grab the game on computer or mobile devices. A hero's journey? A great quest? Hmm, certainly it shall be these things. But for you, young Jair Kathaka, soldier of Windermere, could it not be so much more? As much as indie games look to the future with invention, they look to the past with respect. And now, after a successful Kickstarter campaign, Shadowgate, a Mac and NES game published in 1987, has been remade by its original creators. Made during the heart of point-and-click adventures, Shadowgate is set in a castle of its own namesake. The player, coming from a long line of hurricanes, must rid the castle of its evil warlock lord ruler. Of course, as video game convention dictates, the Warlock Lord is in his chamber at the very end of the castle, and you must solve numerous puzzles to reach him. Anytime you select the wrong solution, or fail to solve the puzzle in time, you're killed mercilessly in one of many various means, ranging from a shark attack to suicide. Apparently at the time, the extensive range of death scenarios was considered impressive. We don't really get it, but maybe it was. You'd have to ask some old person. Hey Grandpa, were the deaths in Shadowgate Impressive? Grandpa? Shadowgate is a warm dose of nostalgia for older players, but also possibly an enlightening blast from the past for newer generations. We've had a few tile-based roguelikes in the last few months, but Road Not Taken takes its own road via its mechanics and story. Players take control of a black mage-like ranger, who goes from level to level collecting kids. Returning the children to their mothers is actually the means by which you clear levels. Every level has many rooms, and in addition to beating them, you'll want to retain on top of health and energy for your journey. With your magical torch, you can carry and fling objects and even craft on the go. Most of the mechanics are left for you to discover, and the strategies for you to decide. The learning curve can be steep, especially with particular misconceived moves rendering levels unbeatable, but it is to be expected of a roguelike. Touching on the story, you can mingle with the townsfolk and become friends, lovers or enemies, 
all of which have their consequences, seen and unforeseen. It's a really nice touch in a genre that doesn't usually involve much character interaction. With Road Not Taken, developers Spry Fox have graduated from their mobile roots and Triple Town rather seamlessly. Road Not Taken is on PC, Mac and PS4. Mind, Path to Thalamus, is a first-person puzzle in which you play a comatose patient trapped in their own mind. And what a beautiful mind it is too, with every spectacular environment doubling up as an expression of the patient's emotional state. But most impressive about Mind is how it distinguishes itself from other exploratory games like Dear Esther. Firstly, it empowers players with the ability to change the weather from rainy to day to misty to night and so on. Secondly, it gives the player clear objectives and puzzles that are solved by manipulating nature. In fact, aside from its presentation, Mind's strongest aspect is its gameplay. It's the story where it perhaps stumbles, with reactions to it varying from heavy-handed to intelligent. Overall, we've found Mind to be a stunning and absorbing game, above and beyond what anyone could be expected to make alone. So props go to Carlos Coronado for his solo effort. That's the five. Before you go, tell us what your favourite game of the bunch is in the comments section below.